Hi, Ben Jacobson here for Ben Jacobson Photo, and today I have a review of four different back panel access backpacks. Uh, by back panel access, I mean if this is the backpack, uh, you traditionally, a lot of the traditional photo packs would have the access here that folds out this way. Uh, these all have the panel that opens on the side that also goes against your back. So I'm calling these back panel access backpacks. Uh, just to show you real quick, here is what I'm talking about. Bag opens that way. So the four bags in question are, start here, this is the Low Pro Whistler 450. This is the Mindshift Backlight 26L. Uh, this is an in-case DSLR bag. And then this is an F-Stop Satori EXP. Uh, and then I, I have a medium shallow ICU in there and we'll get to that, what all that means in a bit. Uh, but yeah, these are four bags. I personally own these two. Uh, this is on loan from BNH, and this is from Mindshift. Uh, and I've had these two bags, had this bag for two or three years now, and I've had this bag for two years, but I had the Loca before it for quite a few years. Uh, this is my skiing backpack. Anytime I take a camera with me skiing, or even if I just go skiing, this is my bag. Um, the reason I upgraded from the Loca to the Satori was simply size reasons. Uh, this is the biggest bag in the line and the Loca was the, one of the smaller bags. And you can, uh, you can just fit more gear in it, but you can compress them down to be about the same size unloaded if you need, to, need them to be small. Uh, so yeah, I, I switched to a larger size here. Uh, the other thing that's worth noting is I am a mirrorless shooter now. I'm filming this with my A7000, or A6000, sorry. And in this bag is my A7R Mark II. Um, and when I switched to mirrorless, I originally switched to Fuji, but when I switched, I realized that if I got a slightly bigger bag, my camera bag, I could actually fit all of my stuff in the bags. So to go along with all these bags, I also put tri a tripod inside the bag with the gear. So there's a tripod in each of these. This bag is actually carrying two tripods. Uh, the f-stops the exception because it's set up to go skiing. I don't take a tripod skiing with me um, But it could easily take any of the tripods I have in these bags. Uh, so yeah, let's get down to it Let's start with a low pro Whistler 450 uh, This is low pros. It's a direct shot at the f-stop line uh, If you look at the bags, they're very similarly shaped um, Their overall size is very similar their layouts similar uh, it even comes down to this, they make multiple, they call them ICUs, internal camera units, I believe that stands for. This has an insert, they just only make one. Uh, but if we open it up, you can see this is an insert that actually comes out of this bag. Um, I'm not going to take it all the way out, but you can see that if I do lift the bottom up, the whole thing will slide out. Um, now, their inserts, uh, Low Pro is very much about protection of your camera. This has, I, I would guess it's plastic, but there's a very hard material in the side of this insert. It's at both sides, top and the bottom. Um, because that's there, this bag has a very rigid look to it when it's closed up. It looks very square because that insert is, is rectangular slash square. So all the corners you're seeing here are from that insert really. Uh, the one thing I'll also add is there's a fiberglass stay that runs up this side and up this side inside the bag that keeps it slightly rigid as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it does give it a rectangular shape where some of the other ones are a little bit more organic, rounded looking. Um, the other thing is because this insert is so thick, this bag actually has less space than the mind shift in its interior component. If we open this real quick. This is about an inch to two inches taller than this, even though this bag is significantly smaller than this bag closed up. Because Think Tank uses skinnier inserts, it's built into the bag, they use thinner foam. Their approach is more, you're not gonna throw your camera bag down, so you just need some padding to it, um, and it's more efficient. I personally prefer Think Tank's methodology here. I like the thinner inserts. It's a little easier to fit a lot of stuff in a bag, um, and you're not carrying around a lot of extra weight. Uh, Low Pro, like I said, goes for a very, very protected look, um, but because of it, this tripod will not fit in the bag. Um, two of the tripods I, I have with me are, they're about 17, 18 inches long, and they won't fit in this Whistler. To get a tripod in the Whistler, I actually had to borrow some tripods from B&H. Uh, this is a Gitzo 1 Series Traveler, the new uh, Traveler Series, just fits. Um, so yeah, and the interesting thing is if you take this block out, this entire bag actually fits in here. 
Um, so again, this is this this bag is a bigger bag, but the insert is a bigger insert, eating a lot of valuable space from you. Um, so just to keep going on the similarities and differences, one thing this bag does really well, two things I'll show you as I zip it up here. One is if you only zip it to this seam here, you have quick access to your camera that way without folding the whole thing open. So less dirt or snow can get in there. And you know, if something wasn't secured perfectly, less opportunity for things to fall out. Uh, but just a quick access panel. Uh, another thing to take note of is the material on this panel, it has a, a six pads here with gaps so that as you wear it on your back, you have good airflow. Um, but the material is flat, which is important if you set these down on a beach. The mine shift has this mesh that will pick up sand. The sand will brush out, but it's just worth noting that as the straps and things hit sand, they'll pick up uh, some, of the, some of the debris and, and whatnot, and it's just... It's a, it's a complaint I have because I'm on beaches a lot, so you, you end up getting some sand in your bag because of this material. Um, if we look at all of them real quick, the in-case has a very similar material, almost identical. Uh, the f-stop has it on the hip belt and the shoulder straps, but not the back panel, which is what you open and put in on the ground when you're shooting out of these. Um, and like I said, that's kind of a trade-off because the reason I like bags like this is when you shoot on a beach or anywhere that's dirty outside, when you set your bag down like this, the part you wear stays clean. If it's a traditional bag and you set it down like this, the part you wear gets dirty, the camera comes out of the clean side, but then you go off to go to the next location and you have to wear whatever's been wet or dirty or muddy or snowy. Um, so personally, I much prefer the back panel access, but I like this material best. Um, let me show you the harness on this. It has very nice straps that keep the shoulder straps out of the way for me. Um, it's a great feature because as you're going in and out of here, the, these are just completely out of the way. Now, I'm 6'4", um, so I'm not a small guy. So just to show you the size of this bag on my back, personally, the Satori and the 450 Whistler fit me better. These are a little smaller. You can wear any size backpack, but this is more comfortable for me. Um, they do make a smaller size of this, uh, which is worth noting. Um, and another really cool feature with this is the sternum strap buckle is not on a strap itself. I mean, it, it slides up and down on a strap, but it's not loose. So with one hand, you can clip it up. thought that was a really neat feature. When I first started using the bag, I was kind of, it was a, a little different. I didn't, I was reaching for it, didn't understand what was going on. Once you get used to it, you'll put another bag on and you'll try to clip it and with one hand and you just can't do it. Uh, so it's, it's been a very nice design element for me that I've really enjoyed since starting to shoot with this bag. Um, the other thing is the, the straps are long enough for me as a tall guy. They're down to my armpit, not up on my shoulder, and the sternum strap easily fits under my chin. Um, so the size of this bag and the materials are fantastic. Um, the straps for holding skis are great. They give you two extra straps to go across here for snowboard carry. Um, they give you a rain fly. Uh, and the other thing is this material is a lot heavier weight than what comes with the f-stop um, So bag weighs a little bit more, but it seems a little bit more rugged uh, So just personal preference you want a slightly overbuilt bag that's more weather resistant and more durable or lighter weight um, And they do not include a rain fly either So second bag on the list would be the mind shift backlight 26L now this I'll show you what's in it we have my full landscape kit in here. So Tamron 150 to 600, Mindshift filter hive uh, filter holder. Uh, this is a, a Sony 24 to 240, uh, my Sony 16 to 35 on my A7R Mark II. And then this is a Davis and Sanford carbon fiber tripod. Everything I need is in this bag right here. Um, so it's a great setup that way. Zip it back up. You can see they have water bottle pockets on the side, both sides. Um, they have a nice little pocket here for smaller items. Uh, I happen to have the rain fly in here, again, an included rain fly. Um, come to the top, unzip this, and you have laptop, tablet, accessories, and again, this is a bigger pocket if you don't uh, suck the straps down. Can easily hold lunch, jackets, all the, all the necessities for a day in the backcountry. Uh, and then up top, they have, it's another one, I, I have the instructions they include with it in here, but it's a nice small thin uh, like document compartment and then the very top has one of a multitude of ways to carry tripods this would go around the top of your head and then there's another one down here that holds a pocket for the bottom legs um, personally i always carry tripods in the bag 
I like to be a little bit more discreet so it doesn't scream that I'm a photographer. They're also bulky and, you know, you bang into things with them, um, even in the woods. So, but regardless of that, I also like to keep the weight as close to my back as possible so that it's, it keeps my center of balance where it should be. If you put it out here, it's kind of pulling back on you a little bit more. Um, so if I were to put it on the outside, I'd use either of these pockets, and then there's a buckle that goes from here to here that you'd go around the head of the tripod. I keep these up here so that when I need to go in and out of this compartment, the strap would go right across here and block the zipper. So I keep these buckles out of the way, but if I were to put a tripod on the outside of the bag, I'd put it right here. Um, so that is the backlight. I'll, I'll put it on real quick just so you can see on a guy my size what it looks like. It is a little shorter top to bottom. Um, has a very nice waist belt as does the Low Pro. Um, like I said, this has two part the soft attachment point over here makes it so you have to do this two-handed. Um, but again, it, it's a nice harness. It fits me quite well, even though I'm a larger guy. Um, so no problems there. Uh, yeah, so this is a fantastic bag. What I would say is this has been my go-to bag for two plus years. It was the first back panel access bag I really liked. Um, it doesn't have a hip belt and it's it's not really an outdoorsy bag. It's more of an urban bag. It's made by InCase, who, who's a, you know, they make backpacks for Apple computers basically. Um, so it's been a great bag, but it's not my ideal bag. So I've been looking for a replacement for it for a while. That's how we led to this review. Um, so what I will show you is the sizes are very similar here. The biggest difference is the camera compartment in the in case is about only four inches thick. So it'll fit at like a 5D Mark III um, or full-fledged DSLR flat. Uh, but you can't rotate it up at all. And even the A7R Mark II, if you put the grip portion up, it gets a little snug in this. Whereas this is a six inch deep camera compartment and has plenty of room for pro body uh, DSLRs or anything. So they, they're similar, but that's a, it's got a much nicer camera compartment here, much nicer harness here. Um, interestingly, if you look at the front pocket they're almost identical they both have a laptop sleeve they both have a tablet sleeve plenty of accessories plenty of room for anything you want to take with you for the day um, this has a little smaller thing here i i keep when we you know go to the city i keep uh my parking stuff in here or you know i have a plethora of business cards in here obviously um, a nice little small pocket this is set up for tripod carry if you had a, like a really small tripod or water bottles fit well in there and then this has um Two straps on the side for a tripod, and this size ha this side has another water bottle pocket. So it's been a great bag. It's very stealth, maybe is the word for it, in terms of you want to go to the city and not really look like you're carrying a camera. That's a great bag. The Mind Shift is much more of an outdoorsy bag, uh, but you pick up a lot of functionality with all of that, and it still isn't flashy. It doesn't scream, "I have a camera in me." Um, so it's a it's a great bag that way. Um, Comes with, and like I said, comes with a rain fly, comes with plenty of ways to carry stuff and plenty of space. Um, now to the F-stop real quick. When you're looking at the F-stop, it's a great outdoor adventure bag, nice and lightweight. Um, it's, it is a very nice backpack, but as a camera bag, all they do is ha they have a system where they put a what they call the ICU. You can get these in multiple sizes, which is obviously a nice feature, but the way these are built and the way they kind of rattle around in here, I'm not a huge fan of. This bag, if we open the top compartment up, it's a straight pass through. So any of the gear you're carrying in this bag, this, this would be attached a little bit better right here. There's straps that hold it in place. But when you open this, your stuff comes out the back. The plus to that is if you need to get something that's in this section, you can open the back panel and have access to both. But the negative is you sometimes have like a jacket or some of your snacks falling out when you just want to get at your camera. Uh, so for that reason, I prefer to have these compartments separate. With the Low Pro, this has like an insert in it that keeps everything in, in their two separate spaces. Um, so yeah, it's a very nice hiking backpack, very lightweight. Uh, zippers are all fantastic. Harness is fantastic. Uh, but the way the camera works with the ICUs, I just don't like the ICUs. I put up with it because it's been the best bag that can carry my skis. But for me, the Low Pro has now taken over that role. Um, I'll be shifting from an f-stop bag to the low pro bag as my ski bag um, And then what I'm actually trying to do is get maybe to just one bag as much as I love this mind shift 
I'm going to try to make this bag work, make its insert work with a tripod so that it can be a one-stop shopping for me for backpacks. Uh, but yeah, Mindshift has replaced the in-case for me. The Low Pro has replaced the F-stop for me. And then hopefully I can get these two to function in, you know, get one bag that works, which because I take my skis with me on some trips during the winter and during the spring, I need the ski carrying ability this bag has. Uh, but, but yeah, these two bags for me are significant improvements over those two. Um, so yeah, just wanted to show them to you, see what you guys thought. If you have any questions, leave them below or leave them on the, on the website as a comment. Uh, and yeah, this is Ben Jacobson for Ben Jacobson Photo with a back panel access backpack review. Thank you.